One enemy remaining. Uh, CG. Do not fight us. CG. That sage wall is disgusting. Hello everyone, today I'll be showing you how to do each variation of the Sage Wall Boost which I use in all of my videos. But before I get into the tutorial, I want to give credit to Grim for coming up with this creative trick, so be sure to check him out if you haven't already. I will be splitting this video up into four sections of the Sage Wall Boost. The Standard Wall Boost, Jumping Wall Boost, One Way Wall Boost, and what I'm going to call the Poking Sage Wall because I couldn't think of a different name for it. The video is split up and timestamped into each section for each wall so that you can easily come back to a particular section when practicing this for yourself. With that out of the way, let's jump into the first tutorial. The Standard Wall Boost When I refer to the Standard Wall Boost, I am talking about the one which allows you to build an extra block off of a ledge in order to create an obscure off-angle wall. Here are some examples of me using the Standard Wall Boost. Now to demonstrate how to do these. When building a wall off of a ledge, it appears that two blocks off the sage wall will be placed off of that ledge. However, when you build the wall, you can see that only one extra block is placed off the ledge. In order to create the second block and create those insane off angles, you will have to do it like this. First begin by facing with your back towards the ledge. You don't need a big run up when jumping off, so only stand just slightly away from the edge. Make sure your wall is pointing directly in front of you and not on a side angle. Once you are in position, simply run backwards and jump off of the ledge. When in midair, you should wait until you reach around this area of the fall. I look at it as just slightly above parallel with the ledge. Once you are in this position, simply left click to place the wall and you should be raised up with it. If done correctly, an extra block will be placed and allow you more creative freedom to move around your walls. This may take some time to get the timings correct, so be sure to have an Odin ready in custom so you can break the wall off of all of your failed attempts. With enough practice, you will create the perfect timing for when to place these walls and will even be able to collect some style points whilst placing them. Moving on to the second wall tutorial, we have the jumping wall boost. For the jumping wall boost, you simply have to find an object which you are able to jump high enough above in order to have around a quarter or more of your body above it. Once again, make sure that your wall is placed directly in front of you and not on a side angle. Simply walk up to an object and begin to jump. Once you are in the air, you will have to wait until you reach the peak of your jump before placing the wall. If you are attempting this on a tall object which pushes the limit of jumping wall boosts, you will have to also crouch at the peak of your jump in order to make sure your feet are placed underneath the wall when placing it. If done correctly, you are able to create some crazy height advantages which your opponents will definitely not be expecting from a sage. Here are a few examples of the jumping wall boost. The jumping wall boost can also be used like the standard wall boost in the sense that it can place an extra block behind you when done correctly. For example, if you are by the boxes on A site ascent, you can use this trick to peek into A main with a very strange off angle. 
In order to achieve this, you must be stood within just the right distance away from the object you are attempting to jump wall boost onto. If stood too close, you will achieve the jumping wall boost, but an extra block will not be placed behind you. If you are stood too far away, you will not be lifted up with your wall. If stood at the correct distance, this is what happens. This may take some practice in custom to understand how the wall behaves at various distances away from an object, although once done several times, you will understand where you need to be positioned in order to achieve these kinds of walls. Once you are able to do the jumping wall boost, you will also be able to do it across distances to get onto objects which are further away from you. Another trick that I'm sure many of you are aware of as it was recently popularised by Guild Esports in a live tournament is the turret wall boost. By using the turret wall boost you can get into some insane creative spots which were never possible without being able to jump onto the turret in the first place. I presume Riot will patch this soon due to what happened with Guild Esports, so be on the lookout for this patch. With that being said, let's move on to the one way sage walls. The one-way walls do not need a lot of explanation as to how to do them as they are simply an addition onto the standard wall boost or jumping wall boost. There are key things to keep in mind when considering doing a one-way sage wall. Firstly, you must understand that for the one-way to work the enemy has to be a lot closer to the wall than you do. This allows you to be able to see under the wall and the enemy won't be able to see you. If the wall is placed in between you and the enemy, you will both be able to see each other. And if you are stood closer to the wall than the enemy is, they will be able to see you before you see them. Now feel free to go and find as many Sage One Ways as you possibly can, as they are extremely overpowered right now due to enemies not realising it's a one way wall and dying before they even realise what's going on. Moving on to the final wall tutorial is what I'm referring to as the Poking Sage Wall. Before I explain how to do these, here are some quick examples of the Poking Sage Wall. As you can see, when Sage places her walls, they are not destroyed by other objects, but instead go directly through them. This allows for some incredibly creative plays, especially on a map like Icebox, which incorporates a lot of verticality. What I mean by this is if you're using the Poking Sage wall in an open area, such as on A belt on Icebox, you are able to place the wall and PK site without hitting your head on a ceiling above you, which would ultimately break the wall. This is the most simple way of using the Poking Sage Wall. However, other variations of the Poking Sage Wall which I have used in my previous videos are like the ones on Split B Site Heaven and Haven A Site Heaven. In order to achieve these types of Poking Sage Walls, you must be aware of your positioning and must dodge the ceiling above you as you are being raised on the wall. When doing this wall, make sure your wall is once again pointing directly in front of you and not on a side angle. Line your wall up so it's as close as possible to the edge of the platform you are stood on. Once your wall is in position, simply left click to raise the wall and crouch walk as quickly as possible to the edge of your raised wall. This will allow you to dodge the ceiling above your head and get you into a crazy position. I hope this video has been helpful enough for you guys so that you are able to master all of the different wall variations. Once you're able to do the wall boosts, make sure to jump into a custom game and get creative with some new spot ideas. Last video you guys managed a massive 150 likes, so let's see if we can get this one to 200, that'd be so amazing. Also if you haven't already subscribed, make sure to do so with notifications on, as I will be uploading a lot more Sage content with a lot more insane walls. If you have any questions regarding the Sage walls or about myself, make sure to join my Discord and go start following me on Twitch as I'll be streaming as of next week. And that's all guys, stay safe, have fun with your new Sage walls, peace out.